All right, I'm Dr. Dom and I want to think about infinity. How can something be bigger than infinity? After all, infinity is supposed to be the biggest thing. Well, kind of crazily, it turns out there are things that can be bigger than infinity. What? Well, other kinds of infinity. This is all kind of confusing, so I've got three different ways to think about infinity that help me realise there are actually infinities bigger than others. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, first of all, we're just going to start with our regular old number line. This goes from minus infinity up to positive infinity. This contains all of the whole numbers, we call these the integers, and this list of numbers is endless in both directions because Whatever big number you get to, you can always just add one to it, and so it never ever ends. So I think this is mostly what we think of as infinity. But now let's look at a bigger infinite set of numbers. We're going to look at the real numbers. So we've still got our number line, and it goes from minus infinity up to positive infinity, but this time we're allowing ourselves to have decimal places. So now we can include the numbers like pi, which go off to an infinite precision of numbers. So even though the integers and the real numbers are both infinitely big, I'm saying that there's a bigger infinite number of real numbers than there are of integers. And how can this be true? In the end, they're both endless lists of numbers. Well, the trick is that the integers are just endless, whereas the real numbers are endless and in-betweenless. Now, in-betweenless is just a word that I've made up. It's not a technical description, but I feel like it's a useful concept to put a label on. To get your head around this, let's just do a simple thought experiment. Let's just pick two random real numbers, and we're going to squeeze them together to try and find the real number that's in exactly in between these two numbers. So we're going to push these two numbers together, but the only rule is they're never allowed to cross. Now the thing is, as we move these numbers closer and closer together, they'll never actually meet, because no matter how close they are, there's always an infinite number of real numbers still in between them. And that's because of this infinite precision of the real numbers. And that's what I mean by in-betweenless. So that's the first way to think about infinity. What I'm saying is that something that's merely endless is a smaller infinity than something that's endless and in-betweenless. But you might not yet be convinced, because in the end, infinity is infinity. If there's an infinite amount of stuff, it doesn't matter the characteristics of that stuff. There's still an infinity amount. So we need some way of comparing these infinities against each other to see if we can have some formal way of seeing whether one is bigger than the other. And that's what we're going to do in the next step. So this is a method developed by George Cantor, the inventor of set theory. Okay, let's do that. Okay, this is the argument that George Cantor used to show which infinities are the same and which are different. So we're first going to look at two sets of numbers. First, the natural numbers, which just go from zero up to positive infinity, and the integers, which we looked at before, which are the set of numbers which go from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Now the question is, are these two sets of numbers the same size of infinity? Because the natural numbers have just got one infinity, whereas the integers have got two. One way of explaining George Cantor's argument is, if you can join these numbers all up with a single line, then you can re-express these numbers, kind of like this, and so on. You can start these from zero, and then go to one, and then minus one, and then two, and then minus two, three, minus three. And now you've got a list of numbers which still goes off to positive infinity, but it starts at zero, like the natural numbers. And George Cantor, through this argument, said that the natural numbers and the integers are the same exact size. Now, you can do the exact same thing for the fractions. Let me just do that quickly. So I just wrote out a few fractions, but you can see if I continued on these numbers, I'd end up covering all of the fractions. In fact, we've got some duplicates here, like uh, these diagonals are all actually one. But see how many infinite lists we have. So is this infinity the same as these? Well, yes it is, because you can still draw a line through them. So if I go like this, and so on, I end up being able to build a set. 
So you can see what I've done. I can express all of the fractions in a set of numbers that starts somewhere and keeps on going up until infinity. But that, this will actually contain all of the possible fractions you can have. And the one-to-one -one correspondence argument is that all of these infinities are the same size because they've got a first element, they've got a second element, they've got a third element, and so on, up to infinity. So even though there are twice as many integers as natural numbers and way more fractions than there are of either of these, they're still all the same infinity because you can put them in this set which starts somewhere and then is endless. So now let's do the same thing for real numbers. Okay, in the first real number we'll just put zero. And now what we want to do is put the next real number, that's the first real number above zero. So that will be something like 0. Well, it can't be 0. 0.1 because 0. 0.01 is smaller and 0. 0.001 is smaller than that. In fact, the first number you want to put in here doesn't exist because there's an infinite number of zeros before you get to your 0, 01. And so you'll never actually be able to put a number in the second element of your real numbers set because, because the decimals go on forever. And that's the big difference between the real numbers and these other kinds of whole numbers. Because you've got these infinite decimal points, that actually makes a big difference. Okay, for those of you who still aren't convinced, there's another layer to this argument which I'll go through now. And this is the third point I want to make. Say, back in the day, some dude rocks up to George Cantor and says, hey, I've got a list of numbers which contains all of the real numbers. I'll just write out the first few here. So this person says, this is an infinitely long list that contains all of the real numbers. Of course, you can never check them all because it's infinitely long, but it does actually contain all of the real numbers, I promise. <laughs> But then George Cantor thought about this and said, no, there's actually a way that I can create a number which I can prove is not actually on this list. The way I'll do it is first I'll take the first number of this number and then create a number which is different to that. So let's just do it four. So this number is different to the first number on the list, but he couldn't just carry on writing 4.1234 because that could be somewhere else on the list because in the end, this contains all of the real numbers. So then what he did was he went to the second number on the list and looked at the second number and changed that to something else. Let's just give it an eight. Now we know that this number will be different to the first number on his list and the second number on his list. Now we can go on to the third number on the list and pick the third digit and change that. You can add one plus one plus three, it doesn't matter, it just needs to be different from this number. And then you can carry on going. And if you keep doing this for every single number in this list, you know that this number that you're creating is not going to exist on this list because it's different from the first number, it's different from the second number, it's different from the third and so on. And so George Cantor has now created a new number that's provably not on the dude's list of all the possible real numbers. The trouble is if you add this to the list, you can then do it again. And you'll create a whole new number that's not on the list. And then you can do it again and again and again. And that was George Cantor's very clever proof about how you can never ever have a list of all of the real numbers. And his argument is that the real numbers are a bigger infinite set than any of these sets of numbers. So mathematicians have actually given these different names. This kind of infinity they've called Aleph Null, and this kind of infinity they've called Aleph One. So those are the ways of thinking about infinity that are uh, settled in my mind that you can have some infinities bigger than others. Uh, but the question is, are there infinities bigger than the real numbers? And it turns out there are, so apparently, the difference between Aleph Null and Aleph 1, there's also an Aleph 2, which is bigger than Aleph 1, and then there's an Aleph 3 that's bigger than Aleph 2. And in fact, there's an infinite number of these infinities, each one which is bigger than the last one. 
which I don't really understand. <laughs> I guess a question is, are these infinities actually real, or are these just mathematical games we're playing now? Because it's got so abstract, it's hard for us to actually imagine any of this stuff. But we can't really imagine just the regular infinity of numbers. So what is infinity? <laughs> So the way I think about this is, infinity is more of a process. We know that if we just count upwards, adding one each time, this process leads us to infinity. And it's just, infinity is just a word that we've assigned to a thing with certain properties. So I guess that's what you're doing in mathematics. You're just saying the infinity is this infinite set and the real numbers have got these other properties endlessness and in-betweenlessness and so we're saying that that infinity will give that a label and it's got these properties these two properties instead of just one property of endlessness and I guess other infinities will have their own versions of those so are they real? Uh, it's hard to know <laughs> the one thing that makes me think that infinity is actually real is how useful it is in mathematics so in my last video, I used integration to derive the volume of a shape. And in integration, it involves taking an infinite number of infinitesimally small things and adding them all together. And using integration, you can derive the volumes of shapes. It's used all the time in deriving equations of physics. And, and it's got these infinities in there. So if infinity wasn't real, how could you do any of that mathematics? So whether it's a concept or not, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, that's the end of this video. Uh, so I hope this video is interesting and hasn't given you an existential crisis. God knows we don't need any more of those. And a big shout out to all of my patrons who are supporting me on Patreon to help me make these videos, which um, I very much appreciate. All right, I'll see you on the next video.